Uh, this video is going to begin with an explanation of where pixels and text relate to each other and why uh, you have to be aware of the resolution of a document if you're going to type text onto it. When you type directly onto an image with the text tool, you are working with the text tool in a system of point size. We measure our uh, type as a font size, and you've been used to choosing you know, 12 point or 14 or 18. That system is points. And it's different than how you measure an image, which is in pixels. So when you type text directly on to an image, uh, the size that the type appears is going to be related to the resolution of that image. So for example, I'm going to open uh, three versions of the same file here. I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to grab the Coral Got Document, Coral JPEG. It can be any image. And I want to have two more copies of this file so that I can set them at different resolution. So I'm going to go to File, Duplicate, OK. I'm going to go again, File, Duplicate, OK. They are all floating documents. Many of you have your images tabbed. So I'm going to change mine to tab. So I'm going to say Window Images Consolidate to Tabs, because this is how most of you will be seeing it. Each image will appear alone, but it will have a tab at the top. So we are going to change the resolution of each of these images. And I want to remind you, we will not resize these images. The pixel dimensions will remain the same. So let's open Coral Garden JPEG, which is the original file here. It's been made to fit the screen, and it's, uh, in my case, it's 63.39%. That percent will vary according to the size of the screen of your laptop. So all I need to do is to look and say, gee, what is the size of this image and its resolution? So if you go to the Image menu, come down to Resize and Elements, which is the doorway to the image size option that you will see directly in Photoshop CC. So open image size window, and it will tell you that the image you're looking at, its image size is 1024 by 732 pixels. And if you are careful to remove the check in front of resample, anything you do to the resolution will not change the size of the image. It will simply tell you how dense the pixels are going to be, but the size will be the same. And you will find that your uh, camera has a default it uses. Canon cameras tend to default at 240 ppi. Yours might default to have all the images straight out of the camera expressed as 300 ppi, or there are some makes of cameras that will express the images at 72 ppi. That is the resolution area, it is not the size of the image in pixels. So what on earth do we do with this? Well, normally, the only time we are worried about this is when we're printing an image. When you print, the density of the pixels makes a difference in the quality of the print. And if you ask, if you have your own printer, you should know by now what your printer requires in resolution for the best quality. If you pay to get yours printed commercially, you need to ask that commercial business, what is the best resolution to submit images for the best quality? And they will give you a bottom number. They may say, don't make them less than 300 ppi. Or they may say, as I print from home does, our equipment can handle images of lower resolution but know what you're dealing with in terms of the printer. But in this case, it, that number could be changed without changing the pixel dimensions at all. Because I have removed the check mark from resample, 
I'm not allowing the camera, the, the software, to change the pixel when I change the resolution. So I'm going to change this one. Let's make it quite a bit bigger. Let's make it 360. 360. Now, what you will notice is that at 360, the width and height change, but the pixels don't. If you didn't notice that, go back to 240 and see what the width and height are. Oh, they're like 4 by 3. As soon as I say I want my pixel density to increase to 360, I'm forcing the pixels to get closer together. And the resolution goes up, but the size of the document goes down. And if you think about it, what do we mean by pixels per inch? It's the density of pixels in your document. And so when I only have this number of pixels and I want them to be together closer, the, the document size is going to go down. So I'm going to make this one 360, and you have to be sure you did not change the pixel dimensions. If you did, you forgot to uncheck resample. So just get rid of the resample and then set it for 360. And we're going to go and say, OK. So Coral Garden is now 360 pixels per inch. Let's go to the first copy we made, Coral Garden copy. And I'm going to um, make this one. Well, let's open it. What is the image size? You're not surprised it's 240 because it was a copy, wasn't it, of the other? Let's keep this one at 240. We have a one at 360. Let's keep this one at 240. And remember, the resample is unchecked for this whole process. You're not making up or throwing away pixels. You're simply making them closer together or farther apart. Their density changes, pixels per inch. Say OK. So this one, this copy, is actually going to be the one that's 240. And let's go to Coral Copy 2. And let's look at what it is. Image, resize, image size. It's got to be 240. It's a copy of the original. This one, we're going to lower this number to 72, which is used by some camera manufacturers. But remember, the pixels didn't change because we had unchecked resample. OK. It would have been easier if I had written the image size information in the name of this file. So let's go ahead. We know it's 72. Let's save it over again and place 72 PPI in the file name so we know that. File, save as. This is the one we made 72. So instead of copy 2, I'm going to type in 72 PPI. And of course, it should have a dot if I didn't erase it. So it's going to go back in my copyright practice images. Save. And we always save it in the best maximum quality. OK. Now, the middle one, if you don't remember what Coral Garden JPEG was, when you get it active, double check it to make sure. That's the one we made 360. So I'm going to save that document. File, Save As. And I'm going to add to the end of that image, I'm going to say 360 PPI. Oops, I got rid of the dot. Got to put that back to separate it from JPG. So I'm going to save it. And I'm saying OK to the maximum quality. And now the one left is 240. So let's 360, 72, Corden, this copy. If you don't know, check it out. It was 240 pixels per inch. So I'm going to save it. Save as. I'm going to take an add instead of the word copy. I'm going to put down 240 PPI. And I still have my dot before JPEG. 
I'm going to save it and accept the best quality. All right, I have saved three versions of this in different resolution, but they are all exactly the same size images. Would it help you if you went to the view menu and you said fit on screen for each one? That one is fit on screen. This one needs to be view fit on screen. So now you know, no matter what their resolution is, they are the same size images. That's because the pixel dimensions didn't change. All we changed was the density of the pixels per inch. And when you start playing with text, you are not talking about pixels. You are talking about points. And points relate to your image based on your image's resolution. How do we show it? We're going to directly type text onto each of these images, and we're going to type the same exact font size. So let's grab the text tool, click on some part of the image, and whatever way you set yours, I've set mine with 12 point, doesn't matter, whatever you're going to use, you're not going to change this information. So let's type copyright, if you know how to make it, 2018 ML Frost, or whatever your name is, and accept it. Let's leave it like that. Let's go over to another version of this image. This is the 360 PPI. Grab your text tool. Don't change the information on the text. Click the cursor and do the same thing again. I'm putting a copyright 2018 ML Frost and I'm accepting it. So you can see what has happened with that appearance of an image. If you want to see, this is 300 PPI. Click on the Coral Garden 240. Oh my goodness, look at the same identical text came out a different size on different ones. What do you think will happen when I go to 72 PPI? Can you think about what will happen? Let's find out. Grab your text tool and without changing the information, Click and type copyright 2018 ML Frost or whatever you use and enter it. Oh my gracious. What happened? Well, here's the rationale. A 72 PPI image has the same pixels as the others, but they have been stretched and the document would be huge in comparison. Did you, we not look at the document size? Let's go into the image and look at the document size. Image, resize, image size. Oh my goodness. When we lowered the resolution to 72, look how big the inches became. It became 10 by 14 because we took the existing pixels and stretched them farther apart to give less density, less resolution. And when we stretched it out, the document got bigger. But why didn't our font get bigger to go with it? The font is text tool is not measured in pixels. It's in a unit called points. And so if you are typing on different images and you don't have the same resolution on every file, it isn't going to look the same, even though I didn't change the, the type information. I used the same font, the same font size, but it was drastically different depending on the resolution. Where is this important? This is important if you directly type with your type tool onto an image file. You need to know that if that image file is always expressed at 240 PPI, your text or type will always look the same. But if some of your images were taken by a camera that uses a default of 240 
and the other one is with a camera that uses a default of 72, you have to change the size of the font if you're going to get the same look on those images. So how do we get around this mess? We get around this mess by creating a file saved as a PNG document. Once it is saved as a document, it's expressed in pixels. And it will be consistently the same on pic images of the same pixel dimensions. Your thing will never change like it did here. So how do we prove it to ourselves? Let's go to each of these images and let's delete the font we added. Where is it? It's a separate layer, isn't it? So click on the font layer and delete it. Layer, delete layer. It's gone. Go to the next Coral Garden image. Select the, the layer with the font. Do a layer, delete layer. OK, it's gone. And the last one was 240 PPI. Be sure you have the layer with the font and then delete that layer. And what do we have left? Three identical pixel sized images, but expressed in different fonts. You saw what a mess it is if you directly type on those files. What happens if you drag the image of your copyright onto each of these vastly different resolution files. Let's find out. I'm going to my photo bin and I don't have open my PNG file. So I'm going to go up to File, Open. I'm going to find my PNG file and open it. And I'm going to drag it into each of these documents which we've seen would be very different if I typed directly into them. Now I've got a file with my copyright. So I'm going to get the Move tool. I'm going to grab the copyright and drag it into this image. I'm going to go to the next one. The next one is a different resolution. And I'm going to get my image file back. And I'm going to move it into the next one, drop it down, put it about the same spot. Then I'm going to go to that one that's 72 that was such a ridiculous difference. And I'm going to choose my copyright and drag it in. And guess what? Once it is a file, it is expressed in pixels. And you'll never have any trouble putting it on an image with the same pixel dimensions, even if that file changes its resolution. So this is particularly important to people who have different cameras that whose default PPI isn't the same. You don't have to go through and change the PPI of all your images in order to type your font onto it. If you've got a copyright, you want to make a separate copyright file saved as a PNG. And every time you use it, you don't have to even think about resolution. It will relate to your image according to how large or small it is, which makes much more sense. If you have a file which is bigger than 1024 like mine is, then that is going to look smaller when it comes in but at least the resolution won't matter. So when will this probably affect you? When you are putting text that is not a copyright. If you're putting unique text on your images and you're not going to create a file for that text, then you need to check to be sure that the resolution of those files you're working on is the same so that you won't have that horrible business of constantly changing the font size on different resolution images. But for us, the answer to this problem is to create a, a file for your copyright and always add your copyright by dragging or 
moving your copyright into that image, not typing it originally.